Let me know what you guys think in the new intro in the comments down below. Uh, an updated intro was long overdue, so um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Now before we get into it, if you guys have made it this far into the series, please consider subscribing. Over 90% of the viewers watching my channel right now are not subscribed, so before the video ends, please consider doing so. I'd greatly appreciate it. We're watching all Best Picture nominees for the big night at the Oscars, so let's waste no time and continue talking about the nominees this year. A rather surprising nominee at that. Triangle of Sadness. Of all the films on this list, this was the hardest to get a hold of and watch. Thankfully though, Hulu came up clutch like they always do. Probably because it's not really that mainstream and the Best Picture nomination for this film kinda came out of left field, so it's not really surprising that it's not as accessible as the other films on this list. But just like Women Talking, I have very little to say about it. And because it's a comedy, it's not really like the deepest thing in the world. But there's also a lot that I feel like would be better for you not to know going to it if you're seeing it for the first time. So let's just get right into it. Triangle of Sadness is a contemporary comedy that hates rich people and I'm all for it. <laughs> this film is straight up bonkers. And I love me some bonkers from time to time, let me tell you. It succeeds in being a refreshing, satirical comedy about capitalism, materialism, and classism. It leaves little to no room for interpretation with how loud the satire is, and I love comedies that fully embrace the satire and goofy nature of its subject matter. Some people will roll their eyes at how unsubtle it comes across, but for me it absolutely works. It starts out pretty mellow and grounded with this plot, and then it progressively gets more and more all over the place, but not in a way that's hard to follow. It actually works in the film's favor in that aspect, because it made it more unpredictable. You'll notice that I'm holding back some details because there's a lot in this film that's worth discovering on a first watch. The first half of the film follows Carl, a male model and his social influencer girlfriend. They begin bickering with each other until they set foot on the yacht and they kind of take a back seat for a majority of the second act but for some reason it works because the way they weave into the film's real plot, quote unquote, makes it feel organic. The second you see Woody Harrelson on screen, he completely steals the show with his hilarious performance as the boat captain. Dolly De Leon also killed it with her performance in the third act, and it feeds into the absurdity of what you're seeing on screen. Imagine the absolute worst case scenario anyone and their mother would have on a yacht, and I guarantee you it will be shown to you in some capacity in this film. <laughs> Take out the murder mystery and Glass Onion, put all the main rich characters onto a boat, and you pretty much have this movie. It probably just fed my twisted and broken sense of humor, but ah diggity, I had a great time watching their misery. Yes, the film drags at certain points to inflate the runtime, and I could have used a little less frantic editing, but on a technical standpoint, it certainly holds its own to stand alongside the other Best Picture nominees. This film had a surprise surprisingly great campaign leading up to its nominations, or not surprising if you're a person that thinks Don't Look Up walked so that this film could run. Again, keep it to yourself. So that was Triangle of Sadness. Overall, a great time if you're watching with some close friends that you're really cool with. And, uh, d you know, does it deserve Best Picture? Uh, mm, I'd say no, because it's kind of a miracle it got nominated in the first place. I just think... A movie like this, especially a satirical comedy like this, has to really say something and make an impact doing so to actually win Best Picture. Now, I'm not saying comedy shouldn't have a chance to win Best Picture, I just think it needs to be something much more to walk away with the award. I don't think it'll happen anytime soon given the Academy's clear-cut genre bias, but maybe one year some film will rise to the occasion, who knows. Be sure to check this one out though, because you're bound to have a great time watching this at the expense of entitled rich people. The last five films on this list I am so excited to talk about, and they are the real reasons I wanted to make this series in the first place. Comment below what you think my next film I'm gonna be talking about is on this list of ranking all the best picture nominees. And also let me know what you think of the new intro and outro and all that good stuff. Don't forget to subscribe if you've made it this far into the series, and as always, please like if you did like it, subscribe for more content, share support, bring in the bell, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.